Welcome back, America. I'm Betsy McCoy, filling in for Steve Malsberg today. And joining me by Skype is William Jacobson, a law professor from Cornell University, who has written a very interesting piece in USA Today warning Americans that our president, Barack Obama, is doing permanent damage to the United States Constitution. Professor, thanks for joining me. Please elaborate. Sure, thanks for having me on. Essentially what I did is I took a look at what happened in 2014 and what the legacy would be for 2015. And in several important areas, the president has decided to go it alone and to not honor the separation of powers that's built into our constitution. The most obvious and highest profile is the immigration issue where the president decided as a matter of his policy that he would essentially exempt up to 5 million people from our immigration laws. This was not even a pretense of better enforcing the laws or what we might think of as prosecutorial discretion. It was simply the president announcing that he would do what he has said in the past he cannot do, which is grant legal status unilaterally to people who under the immigration laws are subject to deportation. And that's the most obvious, but there well, are other- Well, as you just pointed out, he said 22 times that he lacked the power to do this. Now he's claiming that he's doing it because Congress waited too long. You know, I took a look at Article 1, and it says all legislative power is vested in Congress. It doesn't say unless Congress waits too long. That's right. It's right in Article 1, Section 1. You don't even need to read very far into the Constitution to find it, that legislative power is vested in Congress. And he, this is something he clearly recognizes he has to, under normal circumstances, go through Congress but he's announced he'll do it himself. And it's not prosecutorial discretion because what he is saying is that 5 million people will no longer be subject to the immigration laws. And that's legislation. That's this is not an isolated circumstance though, Professor. Give everybody a broad brush because this is only one example of the damage that's being done, correct? Sure, and perhaps the other one that doesn't get nearly as much attention but is just as devastating is he is invoking a national energy policy and environmental policy via regulation. And he's essentially passing sweeping environmental regulations, putting the coal industry out of business. But he's never had a single piece even of Even though Congress resisted these changes. That's right. And even though even, Congress resisted these changes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And even Lawrence Tribe, very well-known liberal law professor at Harvard Law School, wrote an op-ed several days ago in the Wall Street Journal saying this is absolutely un un unconstitutional. He is, he is changing the fundamental nature of our energy infrastructure by eliminating an industry and imposing uh, carbon emission regulations, things that he knows he has to go to Congress to do, and he's just doing it through so, regulation. So let me ask you, Professor, the fact is the framer said we are giving Congress checks and balances to rein in future lawless presidents. Is Congress well equipped to rein in this president? Unfortunately, I don't think Congress is well equipped for two reasons. One is structural. He has found the weak spot in our system, which is that the Constitution is not self-enforcing. Somebody needs to enforce it. Sometimes that's the, con the courts, but it, it also has to be Congress through their power of the purse. But I see no indication that Republicans in Congress have the stomach to come into another confrontation with him because then he'll shut down the World War II memorial again. There'll be TV cameras. The world will be falling apart according to the media. So I, I think we've got a real problem. He said in his last press conference. There that, you go. There yeah. you go. Too many milk toasts in Congress. That's what Ted Cruz said. That's what Louis Gohmert said. That's what Marco Rubio said, Mark Lee. But in fact, Speaker John Boehner says, under no circumstances are we going to shut down the government. Right. And of course, that immediately frames it as Congress shutting down the government. So if Congress passed all the trillions of dollars he wants in spending, but said you can't use the spending for your unlawful, illegitimate immigration plan, and the president said, well, then I'm shutting down the World War II memorial and closing buildings, that's going to be framed as Republicans shutting down Congress. We have so lost the messaging right. that it's unbelievable. What do you think the American people should do 
to ensure that their representatives of Congress show a little more backbone? Well, I think one, obviously you have to hit the phones, but I don't think that's going to be it. I think the states need to take a very important role here, as they did in opposing Obamacare. I think states need to challenge, particularly the immigration laws, that these are essentially unfunded mandates, that you're now legalizing at the executive level uh, a whole class of people, and the burdens and the costs of those people are going to fall on the states. And that I think the states need well, to get you know, very Well, you know, it's very interesting that you say this. Please come back again and join us next time, uh, Professor Jacobson. You've just put your finger on something very important, the states. And they will be very important in protecting our Constitution.